All right, today is Super Tuesday with voters in 14 states and one U.S. territory heading to the polls for the Democratic primary. Yeah, we're joined now by our uh, friend, Nazareth College uh, professor, uh, political science professor, Tim Nealon. You got from the phone here quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, traffic was uh, in my favor, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is, we were just talking while Marty was doing weather. This is just such a fascinating time and such a crazy turn of events in the last 24 hours mm -hmm. in terms of the number of candidates dropping out and then the real strong push by Democratic establishment mm -hmm. behind Joe Biden. Exactly. It, it's like they're doing everything they can to support him. Um, his fundraising has been weaker. His organization is uh, in, in puny compared to what Sanders has. And so the establishment, fearing that Bernie Sanders is going to get the nomination and then lose to Trump in the general, has done everything they can. They got Klobuchar, Buttigieg down there to, uh, uh, to endorse him. And I suspect that you're going to see a lot more of this effort to push Joe Biden over the line to get him the majority of delegates going into the convention in the summer. Yeah. Something about uh, Joe Biden, they just had the uh, South Carolina primary. He has a lot of support among minorities, uh, something Bloomberg doesn't particularly have known for his controversial policies in the past as, uh, as mayor of New York City. How is he staying in the race? What kind of damage does that do in terms of the votes that are distributed? Yeah, Michael Bloomberg got in late, uh, did not compete in any of the first four. It's of the first the time voters caucus. will get their say on him. Exactly. Today. So he's really, but he's got lots of money. Yeah. He has spent like six hundred million dollars. He saturated the airways with uh, ads to try to, to boost his uh, his profile. Mm -hmm. And he's got some key endorsements from African American mayors uh, in urban areas Including that he thinks ours. will help. Exactly including lovely Warren. So I think I think he thinks that he can get some delegates and then go to a brokered convention and then maybe be the the person that can pull everyone together. Um, I think that's highly unlikely, but certainly it's his money to spend. But he could be a spoiler today. He could hurt Elizabeth Warren. Uh, he could take uh, some votes away from maybe Biden, uh, who needs every vote he can to get the delegates. Sanders is leading in delegates. Mm. We think after today, Sanders will still pick up more delegates than Biden today. Mm. Um, so it, it's, it depends on how many. So stay tuned to WIMP. Yeah, it's so we, see, yeah. we talk about the delegates today, about a third of the entire delegates yeah. up for grabs today. You talk about Sanders, really does have the momentum in terms of drawing big crowds, and he's got that youth vote behind right. him. Where do you see this going after today's vote? Uh, whether it's maybe, you know, 60 delegates that separate Biden and Sanders, or it's a few hundred. Where, where does this right. go? I, I think, you know, we still have some very large uh, states to, uh, to to vote. We'll see Florida and New York coming up, mm. and uh, those will be key prizes. Um, and again, it's going to be a question of them then trying to turn the idea that, look, I did very well in the Midwest, this candidate didn't. So it's going to be about spin. Um, but it's really, at this point in time, I think uh, 538, Nate Silver, and, and some of the others are saying, there's a 60% chance you're not going to get a majority of delegates going into the Democratic National Convention. it be the first time in decades that anything like this has happened. And so you'll have to wait to the second ballot. And so there'll be a lot of horse trading. So I, I imagine that uh, over the next few weeks, Elizabeth Warren may drop out. Mm. Certainly, mm. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard might <laughs> eventually drop out. Yeah. And, and we'll have to see if Michael Bloom can can even stay in it long enough if if he doesn't do well today after spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars yeah he it's might unlikely evaluate some things yeah I would think so with Bernie it's interesting to see the momentum he has still it's like he picked up where he left off four years ago he just has this energizing crowd of supporters I, I, um, is that surprising or not, not? Not really, because he he learned how to run for president, and he and he and he knows what what he has to say. He doesn't deviate much, right? So there's some authenticity to him that the young people like at, at NAS. We've we've done some mock caucuses and primaries, and Bernie always comes out on top, hmm. irrespective. And Joe Biden, not even in their mind. So the problem is. Um, Bernie, although he's oh, he's in his 70s, doesn't seem to be an issue with the younger voters. Whereas Biden seems to be uh, uh, that kind of issue that that they wanted a younger uh, person, more like Pete Buttigieg. Yeah. And so it'll be a, a question of who brings the young people out, who can bring out um, other uh, elements in the in the Democratic Party uh, going toward with the general election. It really is fascinating. Uh, are you free tomorrow to come back in and talk about I absolutely would love to talk yeah. about the results. Look extending it invitations. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what your schedule's like. We'll have your people call our people. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. And> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you for your time this morning, Thanks, Tim.